Hello friends, I'm Sarah from Dandelion Seeds Positive Parenting, and I got a really good question yesterday on my Instagram, which by the way, is Dandelion Seeds Positive Living, and the post that instigated the question was about how we can boil down our discussions to a simple problem statement that makes our children more likely to hear our words and therefore we can achieve the objectives that we have. But how do we do that? How can we simplify our discussions? So let me give you a couple of examples all rooted in science. We know, for example, that the more somebody talks, the more the listener, the recipient of the information has to absorb. And when that person has a lot to absorb, they are much less likely to get it all. Imagine yourself, perhaps you're thinking about high school or university when you were sitting in some sort of lecture and the professor talked for an hour straight. And if you had been expected to simply sit there and absorb every word they said without taking notes or perhaps even with taking notes, it would be so much to remember that by the time you leave that hour, you are probably feeling overwhelmed. You're probably wondering what was the most important point? What do I do with all of this information? Well, it doesn't change when we are speaking with our children. Oftentimes, we have a lot of big feelings in here that are very, very valid, particularly if we feel that we haven't been heard oftentimes with the same exact message that we want to convey again now, if we feel we haven't been heard, we may feel like we have a lot to say about this subject. So let me give you an example. Let's talk about a standard one that comes up for a lot of us cleaning up toys, or for an older child, cleaning up the bedroom or the common area, whatever it may be. So especially if we're feeling stressed, or again, if this is a recurring problem, it's really tempted to, it's really tempting rather to dive into lecture mode. Oh my goodness, this place is a mess. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I can't believe that it's so hard to keep such a small place clean. And I asked you last week, in fact, I've been asking you for three weeks, and why is it still this? I don't like having to repeat myself and hear. you get the gist of it, right? It's really tempting to go on and on because we're frustrated, we're overwhelmed, we are feeling perfectly valid feelings that really do want to come out. However, your child is essentially in the student seat and you are essentially taking on the role of lecturer or professor and the child is wondering, which part of this am I supposed to absorb? Am I supposed to absorb the part where you're overwhelmed? I'm pretty clear I'm supposed to absorb the part where you're mad, but what am I supposed to do about this? Okay, you want me to clean, but now I'm feeling emotionally flooded. I'm feeling emotionally overwhelmed. And you know what? If I'm feeling emotionally overwhelmed, my rational brain that, by the way, is still in the process of developing the rational brain, the rational mind, if you will, is typically what people refer to as the prefrontal cortex. It's right up here behind the forehead and it does not fully develop until between 25 and 30 years old. So when a child is feeling overwhelmed, essentially the lower parts of their brain, the more primitive parts that develop earlier, take over the limbic system, the brain system, and the child is going to do everything they can, both consciously and subconsciously, to regain a sense of emotional safety. Now, when they're here, they really have trouble processing the rational, logical, seeming to you obvious things that they need to do. But for children, it doesn't work this way because if this part of their line has gone, or this part of their brain rather, has gone offline because the lower parts are taking over, like once again, the child is going to want to create a sense of safety. What do I do? Okay, how do I feel safe? Maybe I shut down. Maybe. I go into fight mode. This is classic sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system stuff. If you go into polyvagal theory, where the child is either, if they're feeling overwhelmed, they're going to respond from a part of their brain that makes them want to 
fight or flee. So if they fight back, well, guess what? This room is not getting clean. This is a child who's now arguing with you. And what do you mean I haven't cleaned my room in three weeks? I did it two weeks ago. It just got messy again. And I'll talk about this in a second. This is a whole other phenomenon that's going on. But they are suddenly arguing with you instead of accomplishing the goal that you want. Or the child might go into flee mode. You know what? Maybe I'm just going to go play my video game again. Or maybe I'm going to go read my books. Or maybe I'm just going to sit here on the couch and huddle up and not move. Because when you think about adaptation, we have a lot in common with the animal kingdom. And there are certain animals who, when frightened, when overwhelmed, freeze, right? think about deer in headlights, well, the same concept applies to humans. There are times when we freeze when we're overwhelmed. And that also in this example is not getting that darn room cleaned, right? This is not what you want. So the other phenomenon that I mentioned a moment ago is when we say more words, oftentimes our brains naturally go into fact checking mode. And it's totally natural, we all do it, but let's say you've said to the child, you haven't cleaned your room in three weeks, and the child thinks, I know for a fact that I did. I cleaned it two Saturdays ago because I was late to soccer practice because I was still making my bed and I didn't quite make it on time because I was doing this thing. I know I cleaned it two weeks ago. And suddenly the argument becomes about whether the facts are accurate, and not about the issue at hand that you're trying to solve right now. So once again, when we can solve that by using fewer words and making our child's and our own brain less likely to go offline, and we simply stick to a, a very, very direct and loving statement, not only do you need to exhale here? I feel the need to exhale because this is all stressful stuff, right? So by all means, do your exhale, do your sensory calming tool if you need to. But when we can keep things simple, think about, all right, this is on me as the adult. If I had to boil this down to a single sentence, perhaps with a request tacked onto it, my child is much less likely to get overwhelmed. They are much less likely to fight or flee or freeze, they are much more likely to hear the core message that I'm trying to get across. So it takes patience on the adult's part. How do I slow down? How do I figure out what it is I want to say? And how do I turn that into a peaceful request? In this example, I would say something like, hey, it's Saturday. Saturday is cleaning day, period, zip it. The request that I would add, do you wanna start by putting your clothes away or do you wanna run the vacuum? All right, now the child has a choice. There is nothing inherently terrifying to the child emotionally if they are met with an observation and a choice as long as the choice is not a punitive option. I am not at all suggesting that we say things like, do you wanna clean your room or get a timeout? That's not within the construct of positive peaceful parenting. I'm talking about two more or less equal options that are equally appealing, for lack of a better word, to the child, even if perhaps they're not all that appealing. You know, do you want to clean the toilet or do you want to do the litter box? Okay, well, neither one really, but maybe there's one of those that I can feel more comfortable with, but I don't feel attacked. I don't feel the need to shut down. I don't feel the need to do any of those things because as the child, my special big person isn't attacking me. They're speaking to me in a way that keeps my brain online, that helps me know I'm empowered, I can do something here. And most importantly, I don't feel like our relationship is in jeopardy. My parent met me peacefully, I can respond peacefully, and there doesn't have to be a fight. Last comment about that very point though, if the topic you're bringing up has historically been a fight, our children will be wired to go into self-protective mode. 
this may not feel like emotional territory, safe emotional territory to them. So if they respond defensively or angrily, or if they shut down, keep trying this brief, peaceful approach because they need to build trust that you are not going to change your tune five minutes from now and flip out at them. That means that you'd have to stay peaceful. That means that you need to stick to your approach as best you can. If you have trouble doing that, or if your child gets aggressive to you, I have separate videos on my YouTube page about how to handle children's verbal or other types of aggression. I also have many courses on my website, dandelionseeds.com with the hyphen, dandelionseeds.com about how to stay peaceful in the moment. And these can give you, the adult, the tools you need so that you are more likely to have a peaceful discussion with your child, no matter what they bring at you. So you can respond with love and compassion and empathy, and you can get the stuff done that you want to get done. So I hope this helps, and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.